The Detroit Pistons landed the fifth overall pick in one of the biggest NBA lotteries, not only in franchise history, but NBA history. Despite the fact that the Pistons are not going to have the opportunity to draft Victor Wembanyama or Scoot Henderson or Brandon Miller and possibly one of the Thompson twins, the Detroit Pistons are still set up to be in a position to improve this next season. I don't really think the expectations entirely change that much from when the Pistons would get Wemby. I mean, sure, yes, obviously if the Pistons got Wemby, they would be a different level of good next year. There would be a little bit more of an expectation for that team to make the play-in tournament. But the goal is for this team to, na to take the next step this year, to compete and try to get to the play-in tournament. That doesn't mean they have to make the playoffs. And it doesn't also necessarily mean that they have to get a generational talent in this draft. I mean, also, if you look at the Pistons compared to a lot of other teams that are in this lottery that fell in this lottery, like the Houston Rockets, a team where their owner a couple months ago was drunkenly going, pray for Victor on live TV, a team that is relying on James Harden to come back to Houston, a team that just brought in Ime Udoka to bring be their head coach and nobody but Kevin Porter Jr. showed up to his press conference a team that is looking to possibly trade Jalen Green you look at other teams like Charlotte yes they can go get a guy like Scoot Henderson but they needed a generational talent type of jolt in their franchise and they needed it badly now they have a lot more uncertainty you look at a team like the Orlando Magic yeah they won the lottery last year but falling to sixth heavily impacts the type of talent that they can add to this team and so even though Detroit didn't win the lottery even though Detroit fell in the lottery again like it seems to always happen to Detroit they're still set up to improve this season now as far as who the Pistons are actually going to select as far as who should be the number one guy on the Pistons board you know I I have no idea quite yet I know guys like Jarris Walker out of Houston is is super compelling with his defensive upside, his potential on the offensive end. I know I know Cam Whitmore is a guy that, you know, a lot of people are really high, you know, high and low on. I know a lot of people are talking about potentially trading the pick as well. The biggest thing to remember, because I know it's it can feel doom and gloom, the Pistons were in this spot last season. And yes, we got very fortunate that that we were able to still add a great young talent in a guy like Jaden Ivey. Also, they were able to go and, and even get another guy in Jalen Duran in that first round as well. Even if Detroit didn't get the luck last year, they went and made their own luck. And that is what good general managers do. And that is going to be the test for Troy Weaver during this draft because he said during his postseason press conference when talking to the media that he's used to making dollars out of nickels and that he's not relying on luck. Well, now is his chance to prove it because you are getting a top five pick, yes, but you are certainly not having an obvious choice here because there's really not a wrong answer at this current point. Do you trade back? Do you see if you can add multiple pieces in this year's draft? Do you see if you can potentially get flexibility and some assets for the Pistons going forward? Do you stay at the pick and do you get a guy do you think is a dependable wing prospect, a guy who could potentially be an all-star in the future, but at the very least looks like he could be a prominent NBA starter, another piece that could be added to the core? Also, and, and you know, I think this is, you know, even more of a prominent question right now. How does this affect the NBA, our, our coaching search, especially with Monty Williams being a candidate that's available as well? Well, I think that dream's dead. I think the reality of it is Monty Williams is a guy that is going to be highly sought after. He is, you know, aggressively being pursued reportedly by the Milwaukee Bucks. The Philadelphia 76ers also just had a coach opening as well, which I think would fit Monty Williams too. So I think if you're a guy like Monty, he's going to have the pick of the litter. You know, guys like Mike, Bo Mike Budenholzer, it sounds like Philly could potentially want as well. But it sounds like ultimately for Detroit, that's not going to really change their current process in the hiring in in the hiring process. I mean, it makes it more important and it makes it imperative that we really develop the talent that we have in house. And 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 I think the biggest sense that I, I have from 
the social media reaction and from a lot of people's reactions from this lottery is that we're underestimating the talent that we already have. Like, yes, we didn't get Wimby. And yes, that's a bummer. And yes, it feels like every single time we're in the lottery, we don't get luck. But that's how the lottery works. I mean, we only had a 14% chance to get the number one overall pick. And that was tied for the best odds in the draft. We had a 52% chance to get a top four pick. We had a 47% chance to end up at five. So as unfortunate as it is, that's something you have to take into account. And I know especially as Pistons fans, when you've watched this team fail in the draft year after year after year, make terrible decision year after year after year, and see great players come out of the draft after the Pistons selected year after year after year. But that's why you brought in Troy Weaver. That's why you're trusting him to, to have the keys to the franchise. And yes, his, his, his hit rate hasn't been 100%. But let's stop acting like he's just, like, let's stop acting like he's batting under 500 here. I mean, the only draft pick that was a miss was Killian. Yes, Sadiq isn't here anymore, but we were able to actually elevate that asset and get more for our return. And so, yes. We might not have everyone from that draft class here anymore, but Isaiah Stewart is still a really good player. Every single year Troy Weaver has drafted, he has gotten all rookies in that in that draft. Multiple all rookies each and every single year. And so why isn't Troy Weaver set up to go and do that again? And yes, even though this isn't those top guys, this is still one of the deepest NBA draft classes that we have had in a long time. Or is this the superstar prospect? No, but this is a guy that can massively assist the Pistons right now. There are guys who are wing prospects that fit what the Pistons need. Are they Brandon Miller? No, but do they need to be? Not necessarily, because guess what? The Pistons have cap space. A team in the Portland Trailblazers who unexpectedly rose up to the third overall pick, they might be able to go get a guy in Brandon Miller which potentially opens up the door for a guy like Jeremy Grant to be even more available in free agency. But also, it opens up the door for them to potentially make trades. And for the Pistons, they have a lot of trade options this offseason too. And so, really all the lottery tells us is where we're going to pick and where that top prospect is going. Otherwise, it doesn't tell us anything. I think a lot of times we, we set it out to be what is ultimately the ceiling of fate for franchises. And although it can be, the best franchises, the teams that are good, the teams that are actually in the playoffs are the teams that make their own luck. Nikola Jokic was draft during, drafted in the second round during a Taco Bell commercial. Devin Booker was a sixth man in college who was drafted in the middle of the first round. I'm not saying that the Pistons can go get a Devin Booker or Nikola Jokic in the draft, but the reality of it is we act like superstars only go number one. and We act like there's only one superstar in this draft. We don't know. That for a fact. We don't know that the superstars are just tied to that top three. The reality of it is we don't know anything about these prospects until five years from now. And so ultimately all we can do is look at these prospects, evaluate what we have, realize that this is the last opportunity that the Pistons have to really add to this young core as far as the draft goes. And then we try and equip that into free agency, into the trade market and see how we can look at that going forward. Is it the best position to be in? No, but that's not always how this goes. The NBA lottery system is gambling. It is the bouncing of ping pong balls. It is hoping for that potential. And yes, there are certain teams who are, who are able to benefit from that, like the Philadelphia 76ers to a certain extent. But also, we've seen from the 76ers in the process and everything that's happened for them over the, 10, over the last 10 years, that even when they get that top luck, that doesn't always necessarily mean it is the greatest of luck. And listen, man, I'm just going to be honest. I'm really confident in Kate Cunningham. I have it in my best, you know, I, I have it in, in, in my beliefs, but also in my sources that he's going to be ready to go next season. He's the type of guy that didn't waste this year out with this injury. He clearly bulked up. His shot sounds like he's been making a lot of strides, especially working with John Beeline. And I think having this summer to really work on his game, I don't think we're going to see a rusty Cade Cunningham. And if we do, it's not going to be for long. And I think Jaden Ivey is pissed with how, this, with how this season ended, how this season went, 
how he wasn't rook all first team rookie. And quite frankly, I think we've seen a lot of reasons to be excited about Jaden Ivey's ceiling as well. And so do I think this team is a, is a sudden playoff team next year? No. Do I think this team still has a lot of reasons to be optimistic? Yes. Do I think we're overreacting to the lottery? Absolutely. Does it hurt? Absolutely. But the good teams in this league don't make their luck in the lottery. We've seen this. We've seen the Pistons, even when they haven't had the luck, have opportunities to draft great players. They're still going to have that opportunity come the draft. Is it the, is it the spot you want to be in? No. But the good general managers and the type of general manager I think Troy Weaver is can go and still make their own luck in these situations. And I highly expect them to come draft night. But with that, I would love to know your thoughts of what happened with the NBA draft lottery. Do you think Troy Weaver is going to still be able to add someone solid in this draft class? What are some guys, now that you know where the Pistons are going to be able to select, what are some guys you would love to see the Pistons actually be able to add? And do you think now that we know that the Spurs are drafting Wimby, that the NBA lottery is rigged? I mean, it's, it's, the, the conspiracy theorists are really going to have a field day with that one. But that's a whole other conversation for a whole other day and for a whole other channel. But that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for listening. I will catch you guys next time from Half Court. Be sure you're subscribed.